I just want to talk about boldness. Second Corinthians two fifty one or five twenty one. Second Corinthians five twenty one says this: For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. If you see when you believe you're the righteousness of God in Christ. And you can be bold. Taking responsibility isn't a hard thing to do. See, you don't take responsibility because you don't believe. If you don't take responsibility, you don't believe that you have the right to. And that's why you struggle with boldness. But when you understand he gave you the right to, to be bold. Absolutely. Taking responsibility now. See, if you have never been trained how to defend, protect, you know, self-defense or whatever, and somebody robs a bank and all you know is how to type on a keyboard, you're probably not going to go after the dude and try to take the gun out of his hand. But if you've been trained and you're equipped and you know what to do, see, now there's a different situation there. Now there's some boldness that can rise up because now you know that everybody else may not know how to do it, but I've got to take responsibility because if I don't, someone's going to die. And I've got to take responsibility for this situation. Proverbs 21.8 says this. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked in that scripture means guilty or condemned. Let me rephrase that. The guilty flee when no one pursues. The condemned flee when no one pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion. See, when you realize something, that you ain't the guilty anymore. When you realize something, that you ain't the condemned. When you realize that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. When you realize that he put his spirit inside of you. Put the mind of Christ inside of you. Gave you the might, the strength, the ability the fortitude, the holiness, the righteousness, the sanctification of the Spirit, by the Spirit, for you and through you. Now the question is only, only one thing remaining. When are you going to be bold? When are you going to take responsibility? So these two go hand in hand. See, when you understand you can be bold because you speak, you're not speaking for him as if God can't speak. You're speaking for him, his words that he spoke. See, there's a difference there. You're not making stuff up, forcing God to obey what you say. No, 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 no. That's not the way this works. You are speaking what he spoke, and those words he said will not fall to the ground. So be bold in what he has spoken. You know, whenever I share with people, if you're, if you're here and you're watching and you're going, I, I'm not bold. I, I have anxiety. I, I have all the fear. Um, I'm, you're, you know, all this different stuff. And here's, here's the simple reality. I hear, I hear this from people all the time as I'm walking through people over the phone or in person or in our life team or just different situations. When I'll ask them, I'll say, what scripture are you, are you, do you use in that? And they'll name off 10 scriptures. Uh, this scripture, and this scripture, this, and I said, no, 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 no. See, that's the problem. So you're quoting scripture, but you're not believing one. See, if you believe one, one rock in a sling is better than 10 stones you're throwing over your shoulder hoping one hits. See, take that rock and take that sling and practice with it over and over and over and over again. Believe. If you can believe one, then you can believe two. But if you can't believe one, you will not believe ten. Say, man, I'm giving you, I'm giving you keys right now to freedom that if you can grasp this in your heart and in your life, it will set you free right now. A lot of the times the enemy will go, you'll fear the anxiety, and then you'll start going, I gotta go study SWAT. I gotta go study demon, you know, demons and deliverance. 
Oh my God, I got to go restudy the new man. Slow down. Stop putting more bushes in your field so the enemy can, can hide behind. Start cutting some grass. Mow the lawn. Keep it clean. Start pruning your garden. And believe one. That with him all things are possible. Start you know, with- sorry, Angel. Yeah. I'm I'm laughing so much at what you're saying because I literally just did that today. So I was there was something that I was just, you know, um trusting the Lord for. And all of a sudden, like, and you know, the enemy does this, but we also do it to ourselves. I was like, oh, I just I need to get back to DHT. Oh, but I didn't finish the new man. And oh man, SWAT, SWAT, I should have done SWAT. Maybe if I'd finished SWAT, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and then I was just, my mind was just going, man. And and then I just I went and I have scriptures, you know how we do paste scriptures all over our house that we never read, that we never like quote back to ourselves. And and it's just there and we just feel spiritual because we just like, yeah, man, we got all these scriptures. And and then when the crisis hits you, like, Ben, are you pointing at Molly? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Next time, Ben, you take the camera off and then do it. <laughs> That's marriage counseling 101. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> and but it, you know and we're all guilty of that I know we are but um because we're all just so perfect but and and then you go back and and then you're like ah oh, what verse was that again and then you try and remember it and then you like confused it and and then you just want to throw your hands up in the air because nothing's penetrating right <laughs> and so that happened today and I was so frustrated and the Lord just clearly said, what is your one default? And then I remembered, if you ask me anything by my, if you ask me anything, I will do it. If you ask my father anything, I will do it. And I just remembered, Lord, if you said anything and I just, as I said it, I believed it. And the Lord was like, why didn't you just start there instead of wasting all your time trying to remember all these scriptures that you've posted up that is removing the paint off your wall (laughs) because you stuck it up with, you know, sticky stuff that can't come off. And I just thought, you know, uh, if you would just grab a hold of one and that's as you're saying that it's almost like sometimes I'm like, Angel, are you a fly in my home? But really, if you would just grab a hold of just one just one and when I got a hold of that he's like okay so does that cover your situation and I said yes and is that and he said is that everything or is that some things or is that few things and I was like Lord you said anything anything so he said okay I meant what I said so just stick with that don't go look at your walls don't go back to SWAT (laughs) I mean SWAT is good I'm not saying it's not good yes finish the new man you know because you you started it don't run back to the dht but but just hold on to that one because you believe it that will get you more results than trying to go back to read all those things because the truth is you know and and sometimes when you you think that you have to quickly go back to this you you start to feel frustrated because you're like oh i'm not going to finish it in time for me to believe what i need to believe to get the miracle the time that i need it <laughs> You know, like if anybody has experienced that, just give me a high five so that I don't feel, you know, all left alone out here hanging dry. But, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, the DHT is like 18 sessions. And and then what if like, but I need the answer now and I don't have time to go through 18 sessions. And you just want just, you know, to be supernaturally downloaded from heaven with faith. But, you know, the real easy solution for this is just one scripture. That you believe. I promise you guys that works. Just find one. I would even say just find one that your heart has really wrapped around and just keep saying that over and over again. And even stop, meditate, because that's what meditate means to mutter over and over. Like Ben is like as red as a tomato. 
<laughs> and Molly's like, I cannot believe me. He believe he just threw me under the bus on Zoom. But anyway, <laughs> but if you could just find one and really just run with that, you will have so much more results. And if the only result is if at that time you just have peace that God's going to come through, then that's that's good. That's good enough. Um, but but what you just said, Angel, I was just laughing so much because I'm like, I literally just did that today, and that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, continue. Well, we, and we all we all do that though. And I I see you, Mike and Anna. Let me just make this one quick point, and then I'll I'll call on you right now. But um, you know that you had your hand up. A lot of the time, you know, I hear people talk about they're doing this to renew their mind. Most of the time, you're not. You're doing that because you're afraid. You're doing that because you're hoping that that something works. And you're doing it over and over again, hoping something works. And just and l- l- simplify. Take one. Believe him. Yeah. Get fed up and believe him. Yeah. It's not going to take, it's not, it doesn't take the whole Bible to, de- to, to, de- to, de- to, de- to defeat the enemy. I don't know if you know this, but the Bible already said he's been defeated. So it doesn't take all of that. It literally will take you. Like in, in, in my text, according, I said, take as a kick the devil in the teeth with his word. Believe him. Anna? Yes, I, I would like to add something that Pakua said. Uh, Pakua, you hit the nail on, on its head because you said something. You said that um, it, it's not about all these, you know, scriptures that you write out. Because when you take out all these sticky notes and you take all the, you write it out and all so many scriptures, you're trying to get it into your head. But that's the wrong approach um, because it's, it's uh, our heart is the soil it's the seed and it needs to be it enter our inner man it needs to become our identity it needs to become part of ours and here's the key when we read scripture and there's a scripture that pakua you said where you wrap your heart around it that's the key when you read and there's something like the scripture that just it captivates you that's the scripture you got to hold on to you got to meditate on it because you are receiving it into your spirit it becomes your your inner man is feeding off of that and this scripture will when you meditate on that scripture that moved your heart that touched your heart that touch the soy that the seed right the 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 scripture it's then entering the soil entering the heart this is the this is where the heart surgery this is the where the magic is happening this is where complete transformation is happening you are being being renewed in your in your inner man and this is the key point doing doing that hold on i had one other thought um goodness um Ah, oh, shoot. I wanted to say something. So much good stuff. It's just like, <laughs> right. Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal, when you try to write out all these scriptures and do all these things, you are trying to get it with your head and you are gonna, you, are, you will remember, you will me- memorize, but it's it's just staying in your mind, but it's not entering your inner man. And Romans 8, 7 says that the carnal mind is enmity against the th- things of God and it ca- can never uh understand it can never even understand them it cannot grasp them so that's all i wanted to add no, I, was, I was you know paul says in second corinthians he's you know he's writing this letter to people to christians that have possibly fed fled israel at some point in time because of the persecution that was taking place he's writing this letter to possibly wives who he has either murdered or imprisoned their their children, their grandchildren, or their husbands. Husbands that have lost wives because of the persecution through Paul, through the, through the, uh, um, through the Christian Jews that were there. And then he makes this statement in 2 Corinthians 
And he says, for I have, done, I have not done any of you wrong. Either Paul is delusional or Paul understood something way more than what we do. And see, he did not address himself nor think of himself as who he was. Paul understood who he is. And that part, see, I tell this when, when, people, when, when I'm talking to people and I'm sharing, I'm ministering with people that are struggling through anxiety. It's almost like you're getting chased by tigers. And you feel that way. But see, those tigers, if you're in Christ, no longer exist because you're not the guilty party anymore. And I'll close with this. This one scripture, now you've heard me share this over and over and over and over and over again. Over the years, if you know me, you've heard me say this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are safe. That's such a simple scripture. But if you can grasp it, it will set you free. Because his name is strong. And see, many, many, most of us have no problem. Amen. I believe that. His name is a strong tower. I agree. Amen. Preach it, brother. The problem that we have is not with the first part. The problem that we have is with the second part. Is that the righteous run in and are safe. So we don't have a problem believing that his name is a strong tower. But we do have a problem believing that we are righteous and that we are safe. And that the enemy doesn't have documentation to yank us out of there one day because he knows something that our spouses don't. See, we've got to, we've got to come to terms with this. You want freedom in your life? Believe who he says you are and start walking that way. Be bold because he said you can be. Why? Because you're righteous and the righteous are bold as a lion. And if you're bold, guess what? It is much easier to take responsibility. If you're struggling in boldness, it's because you're struggling with responsibility. That's why I hit personal areas when I was talking about responsibility. That's why I hit family, children, work, ethics, character. If you sure those things up in your life through Christ, you will eliminate things that the enemy can try to throw at you. And I, I, I said one, this to, one of these situations, I had a wife that was struggling with anxiety and all these things. And she's, she, you're probably going to, she's, she's going to listen to this call. She's going to laugh because she's going to remember I told her. She said, I, 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 what do I do? How do I handle this? How do I overcome this? I said, uh, it's, it's very simple. Does your husband like pancakes? And she was like, what? I said, do me a favor, stop watching YouTube and stop putting your family away because you're trying to renew your mind by getting on YouTube and sermons and, and filling your time up because you're trying, you feel like you're running out of time, out of fear. And so you're getting sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon. Saturday morning, just let go, go make some pancakes and spend time with your family. Go make pancakes and just have breakfast and coffee for your husband there in the morning. When your kids have homework, you know what? Enjoy it with them. Stop the silliness, settle it in your mind, who you are, and believe that. You go, well, that's not, that, you know, is that easy? No. It's going to cost you your life. So die and trust him that if you die, he can resurrect you. That's the Christian faith. That's the message of the gospel. For you to die, for him to bring you back to life and give you back to you so you can be free to operate from obedience. And from obedience, you can demonstrate faith. Be Angel, free. can I say one thing to that? Yes. Or to, okay, just one thing. I'm mindful of the time. It may not feel like it, but it's really true. When we're going through those things, and um, I won't. I don't need to go into detail, but I've literally been uh, from hell and back. Uh, I'm alive today, and I'm in my right mind. I was in a coma, etc. So, all that being said, with all the anxiety, the fears, what the Lord has shown me on this, if I can say, end of the spectrum, uh, which you know, still we're walking through journeys, all of us. 
there is victory even when it feels like it's defeat. We are really, truly walking in a victory march. And, you know, it, it might feel like, I forget the name of the march. It was a famous march in the Philippines during the World War II where a lot of soldiers died on this march. And I can't think of the name right now. But um, there's such strength that comes out of that. And you really start to see the strength of the spirit of God and you rise up as he's training you up. He's like the word says, he trains our hands for war so that our our arms can bend a bow of bronze. And, uh, you know, it takes strength to do all that. And that doesn't come overnight. I'm not saying it has to be in years. Everyone's different, but there is a training up. And I just want to encourage everyone, you know, we've all. Uh, I love what you said, D, because we are, are a Pukua. We can all resonate with that. But it really is a walk of victory. And um, that's where the Lord is starting to put in my mind. It's focused on him. Count, like Jesus said to me, says to me, count everything as minutia. Everything, no matter what, is minutia, except for me. You focus on me. That's where he's got me. Could I give you the name of that That was the uh, Baton Death March. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. Was, yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know there was a hand that Poppy and Anna have your hand. I don't know who had it first. It doesn't matter. I think Anna just forgot to put her hand. Oh, up. yes. Yes, I did. Pardon. Oh, okay. I'm putting okay. it down. <laughs> hey, so I love that you said you know, to just slow down on the sermons and and start participating in life. I think that's really important. I almost feel like we have so much knowledge available on the internet for all of us, but the disciples never had any of that. And they were just fine. We have overload. And a lot of people live in condemnation because they're, they're, the condemnation is the sermon after the next sermon after the next sermon when they haven't even started doing, you know, eight mm-hmm. sermons ago. And so, you know, we're they're, they're just it's condemnation on top of it because they haven't even started doing the first one. You yeah. know, take, you know, we need it. And, and, and Poppy to that, if you're if you're a mother or, or if you're whatever, even if it's a job, if it's a business, if it's where you will you will find yourself in more anxiety because you are pulling yourself away from what you normally do and that now you have that pressure too right and instead of i'm going listen devil i understand this is a fight it may take a little bit of time to renew my mind but you ain't taking my life and I'm I, going I don't to think I'd ever it. tell the devil it's going to take a little time to renew my mind. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, no, I'm saying that to the listeners here. It may take you a little bit of time. It may take you a little bit of time to get there. It may, t- it's going to take some repetition on your part, but to the devil, you ain't, he ain't going to take my life. You ain't going to take me away from being a father. You ain't going to take me away from being a husband. You ain't going to take that away from me for going to work. You will not take that from me. I will do this. And you, you have no authority, no ability over me. If you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian and you're not a believer, you need to be born again. Bottom line, you need to surrender. See, I'm, I, we don't even have time to go on this topic. But when we say Jesus is Lord, in today's culture, that has no cultural relevance to us. When they said Jesus is Lord, that was a death march because it was Rome. It was the suppression of the king. You do not align yourself with anyone outside of Rome. It was Caesar. And so to the Christians of that day, when when Peter said in Acts chapter 2 that God has made Jesus both Lord and Christ, Messiah, and Lord, that was a that that was a march to death. They understood what that meant. They understood that. Mike, let's close this up here. Uh, yeah, um, just getting back just a little bit to what you had said and what uh, uh, Bakua had said. 
yes, we need to wrap our hearts around one scripture and know that inside okay. out. But more, even more important than that, we're going to goof up. The, you know, the first time, the first couple of times, until we get get it into our heart, what we want to say and how to say it. And we are all going to walk away at some point, knowing something that we should have said or something that we should not have said, and we're going to beat ourselves up about it. Awesome. Don't. That's the bottom line. Just know that what, what you did, go out the next time, do it again. As you continue to do it, you get better and better and better at it. Yes, we're going to mess up the first couple of times, but as we go along, we're going to get better and better and do not beat yourselves up. The devil's going to try to do that for you. Okay. Amen. No, amen. And, and let me, yeah, exactly. And, and as we close this up, we're going to pray and close this out here. Thank you guys for all your comments and participation. When I say it's going to take you time, that doesn't mean it takes God time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take God time. It takes us time. And so those are two different things. In other words, God has already given you all blessings in heavenly places. Amen. God recreated you. And the scripture says you are complete in him. It also says you were adopted. You were accepted in the beloved. You were adopted, Abba, that we cry, Abba, Father. You're not halfway adopted. You're not halfway recreated. You're not halfway born again. Either you're a new creation or you're not a creation. And so either, you know, you can't be new created, uncreated. That don't make sense. So I just want to wrap this up and just say this. All of that's true. So God's not the hold up. It's you and me. So let's make sure that what we do lines up with his word as best as we can, if even if it takes us a little bit of time. But that time that it takes is not God's time. It's the time enough for you and I to believe that he's been faithful the whole time and that he's true. So let's, uh, let's close this up, guys. And so, Father, I thank you right now for everyone on the call. I thank you for everyone that has remained on the call and for all those that are on YouTube as well. Lord God, I thank you for everyone watching, everyone watching later. I thank you for those that will able to hear the word and be ministered to through it all. Lord God, I thank you for everyone that's, that's on, on here that has been able to be strengthened. Father, I thank you for the fellowship and the connection. Lord God, for all of that. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against any sickness, any illness right now on the call. And right now, if you are sick, just put it on speaker, put your hand on the phone, on the screen, whatever it is. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I command that body to be healed now in Jesus' name from head to toe. Liver, now be healed in Jesus' name. Blood pressure, now be healed now. In the name of Jesus, headaches, migraines, back pain, hip pain, arthritis, uh, insomnia, fear, torment, uh, 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 tormenting, tormenting dreams, uh, you being held down in the middle of the night, go in Jesus' name. I take authority right now. I set you free by the blood in the name of Jesus. Be free now in Jesus' name. Your children who are tormented and you don't know what to do. Right now, I set them free. Devil, get your hands off of them. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, be healed, be whole, be free in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus, make him Lord. Repent of your sin. Understand you're guilty. Understand that that's all that it is. Take responsibility for that. We could talk and you go, well, how am I? How, I'm, I'm a good person. Well, that's cool. But you got to be born again. So make him Lord of your life. Submit your life to him. Give him all. Let him be Lord over your life and be free in Jesus name. Amen. Email us, reach out to us. We love you. We want to hear the testimonies. Amen. And so thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. For Amen. Being on the call. Thank you.